Today uh, is a very happy day uh, for me personally. The opportunity uh, to launch a new sports development initiative uh, with someone who has been a leader in this area and whose enthusiasm for it uh, and capabilities of carrying through on it in terms of his credibility uh, across the board in the, in the sports world and uh, its connection to uh, development here in Hawaii is uh, without parallel, and that's Lieutenant Governor Shan Satsui. Uh, we uh, uh, want to expand sports entertainment and participation opportunities here in Hawaii. As you uh, no doubt uh, recall from the time of, of the APEC meetings when all of the countries of the Asia-Pacific region met here in Hawaii to discuss uh, economic and, uh, and social uh, circumstances here in the 21st century throughout the Pacific region, we wanted to position ourselves as the anchor of the Pacific. We don't want to see ourselves as a crossroads or a bridge. We're the anchor of the Asia-Pacific region here in the 21st century. And uh, a key element in that uh, is in the area of, uh, of sports and, uh, and expansion of participation opportunities for people of the Asia-Pacific region. With Shan at the helm, I think we're going to be able to take advantage of our state's characteristics, unique characteristics. Each island has its own particular dynamics and, and capacities that we think are going to be very, very attractive to the rest of our friends and neighbors, brothers and sisters in the Asia-Pacific uh, region. And uh, we hope that uh, athletic events will fit into uh, the individual environments, uh, both here on Oahu and, and across the state. And we think uh, under uh, Shan's leadership uh, and with, uh, with his initiative and his vision, uh, I believe that there are people assembled in this room today that have bought into it and understand that uh, if we work on a cooperative basis and a collaborative basis with one another in the state, uh, whether it's institutionally like uh, the Hawaii Tourism Authority and, uh, and, uh, and the University of Hawaii, or whether it's, it's organizational in terms of, uh, of uh, different teams and groups, uh, everything from, uh, from surfing to, uh, to rugby uh, to uh, baseball and, and uh, uh, other uh, 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 sporting activities that are international in scope. If we can get people to start thinking about Hawaii for their training and for their, for their events, for their venues, um, there is a, a worldwide uh, 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 opportunity now available to us. One of the interesting things about uh, television today is that we're able to see sporting events. If you, if you just take a look at the Star Advertiser uh, um, uh, back page, the TV uh, page alone, you'll find on occasion now that can be as much as six inches long because we're talking about international rugby. Uh, we're talking about international soccer. We're talking about international variations on rugby and, and, uh, and soccer that, that now have worldwide audiences, and that world is increasingly the Asia-Pacific region. That's where the population is. That's where the expansion of, of opportunity uh, for sporting events is. And, uh, under, uh, and Shan had this unique uh, 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 vision and thought uh, about, well, why not make Hawaii the hub? Uh, both for training, for, for, uh, for um, uh, uh, events, uh, including international events. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's a, a genuine pleasure for me today to, uh, to have the opportunity then to introduce uh, Shan uh, with the Sports Development Initiative so that he can uh, elaborate uh, as to what we expect to achieve uh, with that initiative. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Satsui. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Good. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Governor, and I want to thank all of you for uh, being here today. Um, it, it is, like the Governor said, a very exciting day. Um, the Governor and I had a conversation several months ago talking about the possibilities of really looking at the sport industry and, and how Hawaii can be able to really develop 
uh, this industry and really capitalize from our beautiful location right here in the middle of the Pacific. And so I'm really pleased today that, you know, uh, with so many of you in the room, uh, m many members uh, of the community who have had the opportunity to work with over the last several months, um, you know, although we're making the announcement, a formal announcement today, um, you know, there has been much that we have already started to work with, work on. Um, I'm, I'm proud to say that, you know, there have been a number of meetings with the Hawaii Tourism Authority, uh, with the University of Hawaii uh, system, our private universities, um, uh, many of the folks in, 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 the, in the private sector who uh, represent uh, different uh, uh, sport, sporting uh, events and, and, and many members of the community. And, you know, what we really want to do is th this is a starting point. This is this is an opportunity, I think, for this administration to really take a lead role in in trying to help develop the, the this industry. And so, you know, with that effort and with everyone coming together, I think you know we'll really see a, a lot of benefits. Um, obviously, we're going to be looking at uh, looking for opportunities to have additional sporting events uh, held here locally. Um, we we do understand that facilities are going to be a, a, a one of the things that we're going to really have to focus on for for a number of years now. For for decades, we've been talking about Aloha Stadium and what, what to do with it. And so I'm going to be working very closely with the, uh, uh, the stadium authority and, and, and many of the users and the stakeholders uh, of Aloha Stadium to try to uh, figure out what is the best plan going forward. So there will be many opportunities. I think, obviously, as the governor said, um, developing a sport industry will be beneficial not only for our economy, but really for our entire community. So I look forward in the next coming months to be working with many of you as we move forward. Uh, I think the, be the more ideas we get, I think the better we will be able pos to, be, to position ourselves uh, to be successful in the long run. So, again, I, I think this is a, a tremendous step. I, I really thank the governor for his uh, foresight and vision and realizing that this sport industry can be something that Hawaii can uh, really turn into be something positive uh, for the long term. So with that, I guess we'll open up if we have any questions about this, specifically sports, and then I think we'll take some other questions later. Dave. Yeah, and I think we want to bring people together. I think first and foremost, I mean, obviously the University of Hawaii is one of the major tenants there at Aloha Stadium, and this has been, as you mentioned, an ongoing issue. And so, hopefully, with the administration uh, um, um, being a part of it and being proactive, uh, we can try to find a resolution that works for all parties. And so, obviously, you know, we're going to uh, move forward with the uh, a, a study that's currently being done. Uh, by the stadium authority uh, to to best uh, uh, understand whether we should look at the existing facility, uh, whether we should renovate it, whether we should build a new stadium on the existing site, uh, whether the a new stadium should be relocated somewhere else. Um, but obviously, we want to talk to all the users and make sure that it, it, it works for everyone. In the meantime, before that, though, is there like uh, are you find meetings with the, those groups to try to see what can be done now as far as the we definitely want to work on short-term as well as long-term uh, uh, opportunities. So we, we, we want to make sure that we can uh, find a solution that works in the best interest of both the stadium, the other users, as well as the University of Hawaii in the short term. So we'll definitely be working on that. I did have a conversation with Ben Jay yesterday. I know he's on a, he was on a plane last night uh, heading out to San Diego. So he's very uh, uh, excited about it. I want to thank uh, you know, Chancellor Apple for his vision and leadership, too, uh, at the University of Hawaii and, and his support of University of Hawaii Athletics. And I think you know, together we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we can resolve a lot of these issues. Lieutenant Governor, yes. congratulations on your father making the Maui High School Hall of Fame. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, uh, you m mentioned the neighbor islands. What role will they play in the future? Well, I think we want to uh, make sure that uh, we, we expand uh, sporting opportunities to the neighbor islands. Uh, recently, I think as just as of yesterday, the mayor, Mayor Aokawa in Maui, announced that he had acquired an additional 200 acres for uh, youth uh, uh, sporting fields. And, um, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, the neighbor islands uh, do get their fair share of uh, tournaments. You know, uh, Pacific Links and Mike Akane have done a tremendous job here. And we just want to work with the, the neighboring counties to see if there are opportunities like that that we can expand to the neighbor islands as well. Specifically, what types of events are we looking about and, you know, thinking about bringing here? So, you know, we'll, 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 uh, you know obviously, you know, HTA has been taking, been taking the lead role, you know, all this time. And we're not there to replace them. I think what we want to do is be a support mechanism so that we can allow HTA to continue to be successful in contract negotiations. I think it's going to be important for this administration to really, um, you know, uh, lend its support and, and so for that. So, so when we do 
approach the NFL and looking at events, including the Pro Bowl and maybe not limited to, looking at uh, maybe possibly having preseason games done here. Um, you know, the NFL is now currently playing in a number of different places, including Europe. And so we want them to know that, you know, Hawaii is open for business and we'd welcome them to come here. We want to look at, you know, in, in the past, the NBA has had, um, the Lakers were here for, for, for a couple of years, you know, doing some of their training uh, before the season started. Uh, we want to work with uh, uh, the NBA and other teams to see if there are other opportunities like that uh, to make Hawaii a place that they can call home during the offseason. And what sort of timetable are we looking at in terms of, you know? The sooner the better. We're going to start tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, and you know we've been talking with HTA as well as the uh, Rugby Association, and you know one of the things that we want to do is really explore um, uh, hosting a number of tournaments here. Uh, we, we've already been talking about a few of them. Uh, many of you might be uh, familiar with the Sevens tournament, and you know we want to Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaii wants to be the home to tournaments like that in the future. What about Kaka'ako? Um, you know, I know there's a lot of talk about Ellison's infusion of money in Lanai, and I know he looked. I think at Kiwala was as a some kind of an event to draw uh, the big boats, mm -hmm. luxury yachts here. Uh, I know there's a plan on the table, I think at HCDA, for a volleyball facility. And you're a big fan, Governor, of yeah. beach volleyball. How does that all yes. play in? Can you want to come over here and and, uh, and give the, an outline? That's it. Uh, everything from beach volleyball to uh, uh, international rugby. Uh, just think if we had a, 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 the rugby tournaments are, are just huge uh, all around the world. Um, I'm just back uh, uh, from a vacation in, in France, and uh, uh, the, the, the t television is dominated by, by rugby on a national basis. Uh, and NBC has, has just started to, to emphasize uh, rugby sevens uh, collegiately. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested, and I know I'm not the only one, in perhaps getting a club sport. I'd, I'd love to see rugby as a club sport, and maybe we could get some support uh, uh, for that uh, that Hawaii would sponsor, you know, that uh, not necessarily have to be the university, although I, I think that that's another idea that, that we could have. Uh, because we can draw on the Asia Pacific uh, region, which is which is um, really obsessed with uh, with rugby. Um, New Zealand, of course, the All Blacks are are, are among the the, uh, the the leaders year in and year out in that area. Um, international golf. Uh, uh, why should it just be the Europeans and the and the uh, and the Americans uh, emphasized uh, the 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 potential public uh, for uh, golf, uh, including viewing of of golf is <laughs> India and China alone, let alone Southeast Asia. We're talking billions of of people and on an upcoming stars, uh, male and female, uh, in tennis, in golf. Uh, in uh, in uh, uh, all kinds of areas, then Hawaii can be a natural draw. Again, I'm going to emphasize we want to be a, an anchor for that. Volleyball is international now. Uh, it, it is it's among the the most watched sports in the Olympics now. It's it's something that that, that all kinds of countries can be involved in. Soccer, um, the the World Cup now. The United States is 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 in that, but you have uh, Monaco and uh, and and uh, Luxembourg and other uh, uh, Iceland uh, countries now involving themselves with with soccer, uh, so that there is a genuine world uh, uh, wide uh, uh, network of of uh, not only literal networks in terms of, of television broadcasting, uh, but networks of fans for whom a trip to Hawaii for a tournament uh, would be something that would be an automatic draw if we made it uh, uh, available. So uh, Shan is going to be working with uh, uh, the nonprofit organizations and groups here in this room, as well as, as those who have a, a, an organized business interest in seeing people coming to Hawaii uh, to try to start putting these uh, opportunities together. Uh, the first, your question started off with, uh, with uh, Mr. Ellison and the, uh, and the incredible comeback. Uh, the comeback of, the, uh, well, of this century, first of these 13 uh, years of this century, but one of the greatest comebacks uh, in sport uh, ever. 
and uh, and winning the America's Cup. And uh, I can assure you that uh, we were cheering them on from Hawaii. When they were down uh, six to minus two, uh, there were those of us in Hawaii, Hawaii who, uh, who sent uh, uh, messages to them, including uh, f- from the Honolulu Cookie Company and so on, you know, a little su- sustenance for them. And we said, Imua, you know, uh, uh, Onipa'a, you know, you, you, you can do this. You can come back. So uh, Mr. Ellison and the, and the America's Cup team, is well aware that Hawaii was pulling for him when everybody else said they were finished, that they were through, that they weren't going to make it. And uh, so, uh, yes, of course, we would we would be delighted to work with the America's Cup people and the international yachting community itself uh, to try and 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 make a uh, an international venue here uh, in Hawaii. We, we, we'd have to compete with everybody else, but we can do it. Uh, the great vision that Shan had uh, and has today. Uh, in the conversations that he initiated with with me, was that uh, why should we take a back seat? If we really mean it, that we want to be the anchor of the of the Pacific, this is a venue. Uh, the sporting venue offers us a tremendous opportunity to show what we can do and to move forward. So whether it's uh, any of the issues. Uh, rather, any of the uh, uh, sp- uh, sporting categories that you mentioned, we're going to be exploring every one of them. in regards to the Pro Bowl and its future. <clears throat> well, I haven't had any specifically. Mike, have you? Good. They're going good. They're going good. <laughs> Look, it's, it's crystal clear that from the player's point of view, from their family's point of view, from the uh, attraction uh, of Hawaii in terms of extracurricular uh, activity for the NFL, that uh, far and away Hawaii is number one in their hearts and minds. And so we're, 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 we want to maximize that. Uh, we, we, we think that that is a, a genuine opportunity for the National Football League uh, in the sense of uh, good relationships between uh, owners, uh, players, and, and the league management itself. Um, that, that, and, and people love seeing it. Uh, the world over. They love seeing Hawaii, particularly at that time of year. So we think it's an ideal combination, and and, uh, what we want to do then is make sure that we don't take it for granted that uh, that because we have that initial um, uh, good relationship and uh, and uh, and uh, the the, uh, desire of the players in particular to be in Hawaii, uh, that uh, we simply rely on that. We're going to make sure that um, it's understood that uh, we'll provide facilities uh, and infrastructure that will make it uh, not only a pleasure to see, but uh, uh, from an institutional point of view and from a, a uh, operational point of view, uh, something that uh, is, is able to be accomplished with ease and, uh, and, and, and with a sense of real accomplishment. lawmaker's ability to enact a same-sex marriage bill. How much more confident does that make you since critics have been calling for letting the voters decide through a constitutional amendment? Well, uh, um, constitutional amendment uh, is one thing. Um, the uh, uh, capacity of the legislature to make decisions with regard to uh, uh, marriage equity in the light of the recent Supreme Court decisions, I think uh, is something that we'll just proceed with. Um, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure what a constitutional amendment has to do with the passage of legislation with regard to marriage equity. That's why I'm having that formal opinion from the AG saying that they do have the um, ability to do that, to enact the legislation. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I never thought they didn't. Uh, so, um, I'm looking forward to the issue being, um, uh, resolved. Are you expecting to be a very close vote? No, I'm expecting that people will vote on the merits of the bill. Um, for, for those who are in opposition to the idea of marriage equity, they'll be in opposition. For those who were for it, they'll be for it. The only question was, is could, would we respect the, uh, First Amendment 
requirements with regard to religious beliefs. And we've been working very, very hard. The Judiciary Committees have done very, very good work. Uh, Chairman Rhodes and Chairman He uh, have, have been, uh, uh, showed a lot of due diligence in this, working on the question of making sure everybody's uh, rights uh, and beliefs were respected. I think that will be what the, uh, the vote turns on. If people believe that there has been respect shown and, uh, and, uh, and legal measures taken to uh, ensure that people's religious beliefs uh, will not be abrogated, uh, I believe that there'll be a very solid vote. for some departments. Are there any other immediate or looming impacts for Hawaii? Well, maybe uh, the idea of a hiring freeze is, is, is a bis, bit misleading. Um, all we're saying is, is that for those who uh, are in the process of being interviewed and so on, keep on doing it uh, for, for uh, the positions that we're, we're going to be um, uh, instituting, w w it, it will take place in January. We, ju we simply want to have a, 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 bit, a little bit of breathing room uh, to try to determine uh, what we can and cannot do, both on the state and county level, uh, uh, to make sure that, that we're able to act in a responsible way uh, fiscally. Uh, the the uh, circumstances about funding uh, operations of the government, of the federal government, uh, meeting the obligations of, um, of raising the debt limit, and uh, are literally hour to hour and, and uh, uh, a work in progress. So it's very difficult for us to make definitive moves that we might have to uh, take a different look at uh, later on. So um, uh, that's one of the reasons I'm going up to Washington today uh, to, uh, uh, with the support of all the mayors, um, uh, form a, a, um, a co-op, if you will, uh, a, um, a, um, a, a legislative co-op with the congressional delegation, um, the counties, and the state to be able to ad address the situation as it evolves. So what's specific on your Washington agenda, aside from meeting with the congressional oh, well, delegation? We, 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 we want to put together a, a framework for being able to talk with one another uh, as events unfold. Um, if, if you're dealing with um, a, a program of uh, like nutritional assistance, for example, supplemental uh, nutritional assistance, that has one set of dynamics that are, are, are different from the dynamics associated with Title I funding for school lunches. So uh, what we need is, is to have a uh, ongoing forum, if you will, with people in place like our chiefs of staff and uh, uh, people assigned from the various congressional offices and so on to, to, to be able to have an ongoing dialogue with one another so that we can figure out what we need to do and what we can do. Um, let me give you a quick example. Um, it's one thing to say, well, can the state pick up the funding, say, for national parks or something like that? Well, there's, it's public money. I, I, I can't. Nobody can just pick up uh, the funding uh, for um, opening up parks. For example, the, 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 the federal parks, they have federal employees. The state just can't write a check to a federal employee to uh, pay their salary. Uh, or their benefits. There's questions of liability. What if something goes wrong or somebody doesn't do, do their job correctly? Is the state then liable for, for that activity? And even if you could figure out some way to utilize state funds to, to uh, 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 pick up a supplemental nutrition program or, or open a, 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 the gates to a, a, a national park, it will still take time to do that. It's not as if it's an, an automatic, it's not an ATM uh, approach. So that involves uh, payrolls. It involves accounting. Uh, I, I'm not trying to cite so much the, the, the reasons why you can't do it so much as to say that, that um, it's a disservice to the failure. Uh, it's a disservice to understanding what the failure to meet our obligations uh, in, in Washington by 
uh, a, a, a small faction of the Republican Party in the House, uh, what what the, what's, what it means and what what that's done. It's it's a failure to do uh, what we're supposed to do as legislators. When you run for office, you run uh, uh, for uh, you run on the basis of asking people to put their faith and trust in you, that you will take care of what is necessary for the government to do, that you pay your bills, that you meet your obligations. You can have discussions back and forth as to what the policy should be with regard to that. But to say that you will fail to meet your obligations, your fundamental obligations, or to threaten that you will shut the government down unless your particular policy is adhered to, uh, is, is the ultimate irresponsibility. And uh, to, uh, to in turn allow a small faction of, uh, of any party, in this instance the Republican Party, uh, to dictate uh, to the rest of the world on the basis of their ideological obsessions uh, it, it has resulted uh, within the last hour in, uh, in uh, the credit rating company Fitch uh, putting the United States, the United States of America's uh, uh, credibility with regard to, to, to its finances on a negative watch, on a negative watch, uh, it, 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 it's, it's beyond irresponsibility. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it, that, it, I, I can tell you right now, having, having served in every legislative venue that there is, I've had the privilege of it, the State House of Representatives, the State Senate, the City Council, and the Congress of the United States for, for two decades. If the Speaker of the House will put a bill on the floor that funds the government, that raises the debt limit, and names conferees to, to deal with the question of the budget, it will pass overwhelmingly with Democrat and Republican support. It will pass on a bipartisan basis. This is not Democrats versus Republicans. This is Democrats and Republicans versus a small faction of, of, of people who call themselves Republicans, but who are actually these Tea Party uh, folks who have no, no, no vision of, of what it is to engage in responsible government. It is possible right now, right now, this minute, to put a, a bill on the floor that will get uh, an overwhelming Democrat and Republican vote. It requires the Speaker of the House uh, to act as Speaker of the House of Representatives and not leader of the Republican conference. Governor, is it your belief that if they don't um, deal with this, that Hawaii could be hardest hit just given our locale, given our reliance on the military mm -hmm. and tourism? Well, that, uh, that's why we're putting together, uh, that's why I'm going to Washington to solidify uh, a set of protocols and an infrastructure, if you will, for the, the delegation, um, the counties and the state to be able to act in concert with one another uh, to be able to address any of those consequences as they come. The reason I can't be more specific about it is I have no idea yet uh, from hour to hour what it is that, 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 that they will put forward if they're able to vote it at all. Um, but in the meantime, uh, every, uh, every county and all the departments of, of uh, the state are working day in and day out uh, to try and figure out where we have reserves of funds, where we, where we have any jurisdiction or control over funds at all. Some of these funds you know, are uh, 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 contracted out of the federal government through federal departments, and the state merely is the, is the pass-through uh, for them. So we, we don't even have access to, to, to the mechanisms that put those funds forward. So, um, and some, uh, uh, some uh, programs are 100% federal funded. I mean, in other words, all the employees are ostensibly state employees, but they're actually, uh, the funding for the positions and, and, and the benefits and everything is 100% is uh, federal. So um, when, in terms of being hit hard or not, um, what, what we intend to do uh, is to see to it that we understand what it is that's available to us and to try to take steps uh, accordingly, depending on what the circumstances are as, as they evolve uh, uh, financially. The, the, the state itself, in terms of our administration, 
uh, I'm happy to say, uh, I believe is, you know, we, 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 we got a, a stable, we turned, we stopped the, the, the bleeding um, that, that we faced three years ago. And uh, I'm, I'm very optimistic that we're going to get a very, very good report, maybe even go to the positive side uh, in terms of our economic outlook. And uh, uh, again, I, I hope to be able to report on that fairly soon. I believe the, the, the credit rating companies like Fitch and Standard and & Poor and Moody's will, will have their reports ready shortly. Um, uh, so I, I think we're in very good uh, position, and I'd hate to see that jeopardized. All the hard work that's been done, the tough decisions that had to be taken, the hard choices that had to be made over the last three years, I'd hate to see that put in jeopardy because of the irresponsibility of a small faction of people who don't understand that they live in a nation uh, the, uh, in, in which the government is truly representative of the people, and uh, and for them to try and bring that government to its knees um, is is uh, is something that is uh, is beyond reprehensible. So back to sports. I just want to. It is a priority. Yeah. Oh. No, so we, we don't. We, no, yeah. So I, I think facilities obviously will be something we're going to have to focus on because without the facilities, then you know, we can't mm -hmm. have these types of events. So, you know, but we'll be looking, mm -hmm. and, and part of it is then how do we pay for these things, right? So if it, is it a public private partnership? Mm -hmm. Are these state facilities that are run by the state, or are these state facilities that are, 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 are leased out mm -hmm. and managed and operated by someone else? So we're going to be looking and exploring all those different <coughs> options. I mean, uh, you know, so th this is why we're doing it, you know. What kind of role does UH play in all? facilities be one of the chief components? Well, yeah, I, th I think the University of Hawaii and a, a lot of our other private universities here, uh, you know, will play a significant role in, in terms of determining how we move forward. I mean, we want to make sure that it, it's a positive experience, not just for spectators, but obviously for a lot of our student athletes, especially our local ones who have been born and raised here and have an opportunity to, to stay at home and get a good quality education and to, you know, uh, as well, and to d develop their uh, sports skills along the way. So, you know, we're, we're going to be working together to make sure that this thing works, not just from the professional athletes part, but all the way down to our youngest uh, student athletes. What types of organizations have you guys been speaking with right now in regards to this initiative? Well, there have been a lot. I mean, the, 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 we have some members from the uh, Professional Rugby Aso Association who's here. Um, you know, we talked to folks uh, who want to uh, have professional soccer here. Um, you know, I've been um, working with HTA and, and their sports coordinator to try, try to figure out how we can best partner up to, to again, to, to be able to enhance some of these discussions and to really let uh, a lot of these professional leagues know that Hawaii is serious about uh, having them be here and we, we, we want to have a partnership, a long-term partnership. So, um, and and we, we need to develop that. And I think the best way to develop that is to have the administration uh, being part of those discussions. I and mean, we want to make sure that HTA is fully equipped when we have those uh, contract negotiations to make sure that we're successful in the end. Have negotiations started yet? Because I just want to, like, at this point, what league are you guys furthest along with in regards we, to We've had just informal talks. So not, nothing specific, uh, nothing, uh, but, but people have, have come to us and they're interested in, in, in playing a number of different events here. And we're, we're going to make sure that we follow through on all of them. Thank you very much. Thank you.